live stream is started and verbal confirmation when we are broadcasting. Right. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Regulatory Committee. The agenda, papers, and all relevant information for this meeting are available for the public viewing on the Herefordshire Council website. Please remember that what you say and what you do at this meeting will have a global reach and words and actions should be chosen carefully. Members are reminded that speeches of this meeting are for three minutes. Other attendees, um, Council is, is streaming this meeting live on the Herefordshire Council YouTube channel and also making a recording. This recording will be available via the Council's website shortly after the meeting has concluded. Other attendees are permitted to film, photograph and record our public meeting, provided that it does not disrupt the business of the meeting. If you do not wish to be filmed or photographed, please identify yourself so that anyone who intends to record the meeting can be made aware. There's no one. To ensure that recording quality is maintained, could members speak as clearly as possible and keep background noise to a minimum and ensure that mobile phones and other devices are turned to silent? Welcome to, to all those in attendance. I will now ask each person who, who, in remotely, who is in attendance remotely, in turn, please to speak and confirm that they are able to hear me. I will confirm in response that I can hear you. Councillor Watson. Yes, hello, Chair. I can see and hear you. Thank you. I can see and hear you. Move on to item one, apologies for absence. We have received apologies from Councillor Paul Andrews and there are no other apologies. N item two, name substitutes. We have the following substitute, Councillor Summers for Councillor Paul Andrews. Item three, declarations of interest. Please indicate it if you wish to declare an interest and then call each councillor in turn. Councillors? Councillor Hardwick. Morning, Chairman. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Y Valley AOMB, so um, that affects uh, agenda item six, but it's non pecuniary. Thank you. Any other declarations of interest? None? If there are no other phones. Then I go on to the sorry. Then I go on to the item four, the minutes. To confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the twenty eighth of April two thousand and twenty one. No matters of accuracy have been inaccuracy have been notified to the monitoring officer. Are the minutes of the meeting of the 28th of April 2021 approved, please? Please can members raise their hands. Any against? Any abstentions? One. Councillor Summers, thank you. Then we move on to Chairman's announcement. Announcements, item five. Can I first of all um, on behalf of the committee and myself, thank Councillor Hardwick for his service over the last recent years as chairman of, of, um, of the planning committee. I think he's done an excellent job. Uh, he's been a, an excellent chairman, and uh, I thank him very much from, from sincerely, and I, as I'm sure we all do as well. Thank you. Can I also, as well, Mark, um, mark the passing of someone very special to many of us on this council, Tim Brown, who has left the, the council um, at very short notice as far as we're concerned. He would be very unhappy if he heard this 
particular meeting, the fact that we're um, marking his, his departure, but I've known Tim for 25 years, and he comes from a school that, of, um, of, how shall I say, service that is long, long past. He is totally, he was totally dedicated, sincere, and honest in his dealings with the council. Um, I, I, as I say, we had very little, uh, I shall miss, I think, perhaps his face when members were behaving not as perhaps as they should do, when there was a slight drop in the, the expression as, uh, as if we were naughty children without being too obvious that his disapproval of us was that, that strong. He was an excellent public service and was, was a, the epitome of what public service means. And I, I personally, and I'm sure all of you who know him to a greater or a lesser degree, will miss his presence at our meetings. Thank you, Tim. Right. Um, I now request that public speakers for agenda item six, Miss Miller, a local resident via Zoom, Mr. Price, the applicant's agent attending in person, join the meeting. Chair. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I've, I've got to ask uh, if you take the place, uh, Kevin, to introduce them, the the uh, team, planning team for the individual items of the meeting. Councillor Summers, do you want? Chair, to can I ask why we didn't do a site visit on this one? We didn't do a site visit on on the why, Sim and Jack. When? Previous meeting. Okay, thank you. I was not previous meeting, so thank you. Can I just uh, answer some as it is a deferral from the previous meeting? Yeah. Thank, thank you, Chairman Members. Uh, welcome. It's nice to see you all again. Um, I'm pleased to say the suit did fit this morning when I put it on. So, uh, uh, so today we have um, four items for you for consideration. And to my right, we have the legal advisor to the committee today, Dawn Evans. To my left, we have Gemma Webster, who will present the first item, which is number six, land at Y Valley View, Simmons Yacht West, uh, Ross on Y. Um, to the right, far right, uh, for item number seven, Kelly Gibbons will present land off Brayton Lee, uh, Kingsacre Road, Hereford. Uh, Ollie Jones will be joining us uh, for item number eight, Robin's Nest at the Yard, Wolford and Grange, Brimfield. And item number nine, Westerings Kington, Amber Morris will join us virtually. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Um, now we'll um, we'll move to the case officer who will present this application. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, members. There are no updates regarding this application other than those found within the officer's report. The site is located within the settlement of Simmons Yacht West on the eastern slope of Doward Hill, shown by the red star on the map. Simmons Yacht is identified within the core strategy, policy RA2, as a smaller settlement where proportionate housing will be appropriate. The site is within the Y Valley AOMB. The proposal seeks full planning permission for the construction of a detached three-bedroom dwelling, which will be of a split-level design with parking area for three cars and cycle storage. Next slide, please. The existing property, Y Valley View, is a detached two-storey dwelling set within a large curtilage located between the lower B4164 and Ashes Road above, which is a byway. The curtilage also includes a converted outbuilding used as a holiday let and detached garage. The principal access to Y Valley View is from the lower road adjacent to the Y Not Inn, and a secondary access from Ashes Road, along with access to the paddock also in the ownership of the applicant. Surrounding the site are a mixture of stone two-storey cottages and rendered two-storey split-level dwellings and bungalows. The site is located within the settlement boundary defined within the Whitchurch and Ganneroo Neighbourhood Development Plan, which was made 11th of October 2019. Policy WG2 of the NDP states that infilling may take place within the settlement boundary, where this matches the scale and form of the settlement and is designed to fit sensitively into the landscape and result in an enhancement of the natural and historic environment. As can be seen from the top block plan on the slide, this part of Simmons Yacht is largely represented by detached dwellings within their own plots, which runs along the slope that runs west to east towards the river, 
and therefore utilise split level properties, with many properties having access for a network of Ashes Lane and smaller lanes. Next slide, please. The application site comprises approximately the southern third of the curtilage and extends the full depth between the lower and upper roads. Within the site is a mixture of terraced lawns, garden trees and hedge planting. Levels fall sharply from the upper to the lo lower road, as can be seen on this existing plan. The dwelling would be sited at the western end of the site, primarily on area of terraced lawns, and would utilise the existing terracing to eliminate the need for any soil to be removed from site. Next slide, please. The proposed dwelling utilises these site levels to achieve a split level design with the more traditional accommodation layout reversed so that the bedrooms are at the ground floor and kitchen and living space at first floor. The most western part of the dwelling would be single storey adjacent to the proposed car parking area when viewed from Ashes Lane. One storey will be seen as shown on the western elevation plan on the top right. Following initial concerns from the landscape officer in regards to the impact of the proposal on the Y Valley Area and B, amended plans were received in November 2020 <coughs> which reduced the overall scale and size of the dwelling. The dwelling will be primarily constructed using natural stone at ground floor and timber cloud elevations above, under a pitch slate roof. The split level design reduces the overall scale and mass of the property, whilst making better use of the land without the need for significant engineering works following the site contours and terrace lawns. The proposed dwelling has been designed and will be built in accordance with the increased energy efficiency standards, with benefits of passive solar gain to be maximised through incorporating larger areas of glazing on the east, south and west elevations and minimising openings on the north elevation. The first floor glazing on the east elevation will also incorporate tinted glass to control overheating and minimise light spill. Solar PV panels are proposed on the southern roof slope of the proposed dwelling and a low carbon heating system in the form of an air source heat pump is also to be incorporated. Next slide, please. As stated earlier, the site is located within the settlement boundary and within a large garden, garden curtilage infill plot. NDP policy WG5 states that housing development should be individual dwellings close to row frontages that reflect the form and mass around the settlement pattern, utilise infill plots when viewed in relation to the character and grain rhythm and density of the area, ensure dwellings are appropriate size, be capable of being accommodated upon the narrow na lane network and not result in the need for them to be widened and to ensure tree and hedgerow cover is retained. Officers consider that this proposal meets all of the criteria within the NDP policy. Of particular note is shown within this plan for ecological enhancements, which in is including approximately 85 metres of new native hedgerow to be planted along the northern boundary and eastern boundary of the site, and along the western boundary of the adjacent paddock. In addition, there will be significant new tree shrub planting to maintain and provide additional screening into the site. This plan also shows that foul water will be disposed of via mains drainage. A new connection will be made on the lower road, of which Welsh water have no objections. Surface water will be managed through suds, such as underground cellular storage and permeable paving and soakaways. The land drainage officers consider these methods as acceptable and conditions have been recommended for a detailed surface water strategy and infiltration testing to be provided. The plan shows in the top right a cross-section of the proposed dwelling looking from the north and how it fits into the contours and existing terrace gardens. Next slide, please. A full landscaping plan has been submitted, providing details of all planting and maintenance. The landscape officer has reviewed the plans and, as stated earlier, originally requested a reduction in the scale and size of the property. This was achieved through these amended plans. The landscape officer has no objection to the amended plans and stated the unique design within the infill plot is more suitable to the scale and character of the settlement and follows the rhythm of buildings along the developed size of Simmons Yap. Following the previous planning committee in April, the landscape officer has further reviewed the plans, in particular against the specific points within the Y Valley A and B management plan, and it remains your officer's opinion that there will be no harm in the A and B as the site is located adjacent to existing residential properties within the defined settlement boundary. It is also considered that there will be no adverse impact upon tourism within the Y Valley A and B following assessment with regard to policy WVS4 of the management plan as requested. Next slide, please. The existing access off Ashes Road is to be utilised to accommodate level access to a parking area for three vehicles and secure cycle parking. The amended plans that were received to overcome the original highway concerns on the 12th of February, these amendments included reducing the size and repositioning of the cycle and bin store and stepping back the proposed new hedgerow along the northern boundary of the adjacent paddock to ensure that there is sufficient visibility space to allow the drivers to reverse out of the proposed parking area onto the byway without any obstruction to visibility. 
Following these amendments, the area engineer team leader has no objection to the proposals and accepts that cars will be required to reverse out onto the byway, but will now have the required visibility to do so. In addition, there are no objections from the public rights of way officer. The highways officer has recommended that a construction management plan is conditioned, which in particular ensures off-road parking for site operatives and a site compound. Deliveries will be made to the site from the lower road and wheel washing apparatus in situ. This has been included in the list of conditions of the officer's report. The agent has further detailed that all aggregates will be delivered in bulk bags using a 7.5 ton lorry and that no loose bulk deliveries will be made with tipper lorries and concrete will be pumped from the end of the Y Valley view access. Therefore, there will be no deliveries made from Ashes Lane. Concerns were raised in the last planning committee that the property Y Valley view is currently advertised for sale. The agent has confirmed that it will be written into the contract of sale for site operative parking in the western part of the paddock and the proposal will maintain road frontage of approximately 15 metres, so this will not have an impact upon the deliveries during the build. It was noted on the site visit that there is a sharp bend at the top of the Pritchards Lane, one of the access roads onto Ashes Lane. Members should note that the steep slip road that runs to the south of the site is not the main access onto Ashes Lane. Ashes Lane continues to run in a straight line to the south until it meets the lower road 240 metres further to the south, with a large area in which to exit Ashes Lane opposite Paddock's Hotel which existing residents use, so the smaller lane with a hairpin pen turn is not required to be used to access the site. Next slide, please. The design of this proposal mirrors that of the existing pattern of development in the area, as can be seen from the plan with adjacent curtilage marked out in red and the site marked with a red star. It is considered that the property is of a scale and size that is in keeping with the adjacent properties and the area as a whole. The property is well designed into the landscape and provides one additional family home with an infill plot that will not have an adverse impact upon the landscape and in particular the Y Valley AOMB. As can be seen from the aerial view, the proposed dwelling will be sited in excess of 25 metres from the nearest property. As it is set within well-screened site, there will be no adverse impact upon the residential amenity to adjacent properties from overlooking or overshadowing. Next slide, please. Photographs show the internal area of the site and the terracing of existing gardens. The photo on the left is of the upper terrace looking north to south and the photograph on the right is looking from the southwest to the northeast on the lower terrace, where the main part of the dwelling will be. The existing garage is to the right of the photograph. Next slide, please. These two photographs are taken from outside of the site looking in. The photograph on the top left is a view into site directly from below the lower road. The existing vegetation will remain and additional shrubs and tree planting will be provided as part of the scheme. The photograph to the bottom right is taken from the northwest of the site, standing on Ashes Lane, adjacent to the paddock fence line. As can be seen, there is significant screening through existing vegetation. This will be further enhanced by the new native hedgerow to be planted along the northern boundary of the site and along the paddock boundary of, with Ashes Lane. The existing parking area is to the right of the picture. To conclude, the site is within the defined settlement boundary and within the main part built up area of the village. The site is within an infill plot that maintains the grain and character of the area and surrounding existing dwellings. The proposed dwelling is well designed incorporating the site levels into the design, therefore requiring little or no soil to be removed from the site. The proposal will achieve high energy efficiency standards along with significant additional landscape and biodiversity gains with the associated landscaping which would be a betterment for the area. Although it is acknowledged that the occupants would be reversing onto the byway, it is also considered that speeds are considerably low in this location and it has been demonstrated that there is sufficient visibility to ensure that there is not a severe impact to any user of Ashes Lane. Overall, the proposal complies with planning policy and complies with the NDP policies, and therefore officers are recommending approval. Thank you, members. And, Chair, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Weverton. Now we come to the speakers. We have a written submission, a virtual speaker, and one speaker here physically. So we've got uh, all, all three types of presentation. First of all, I think we will go to the written submission who Mr Evans will read. Whitchurch and Ganaru Group Parish Council object to this planning application as we believe it breaches a number of policies in our neighbourhood development plan. Contrary to the applicant's design statement, the house is not required to meet the parish's housing needs, NDP policy WG1, as this has already been met. The minimum target for new houses in Whitchurch for the period 2012 to 2031 is 65 houses. We now have a total of 77 houses either built 
in the process of being built or with planning permission. We also have two new houses which have been built and for which retrospective planning uh, permission is being sought, Old Court Bank. We do not believe that the siting, mass and design is sympathetic to the local character and that it in no way cons conserves or enhances the scenic beauty of the Y Valley AOMB. It thus fails to meet NDP policies WG7, WG8, WG14 and WG15. The Parish Council is concerned about the geological stability of Simmons Yat West, given the disruption caused by recent landslides in the area. We believe that a geotechnical survey should be a condition of any development in the Simmons Yat West settlement area. A positive geotechnical survey would be required in order for the application to meet NDP policies WG7 and WG15. We believe that contrary to the applicant's design statement, vehicular access and turning will be a major problem on Ashes Lane, a byway open to all traffic WC61. Vehicles parked at the proposed dwelling will have no choice but to turn in Ashes Lane. No provision has been made for vehicle turning areas in the site plans. Any construction traffic and associated delivery vehicles would have to park in Ashes Lane, adding disruption to an already very busy byway. There will be a temptation for construction vehicles to use Pritchard's Lane, byway open to all traffic WC72A, as a shortcut down to the B4164. This has caused enormous problems in the past with vehicles attempting to make this turn ending up in the adjacent gardens. That's Roger Smith, Chairman of Whitchurch and Ganaroo Group Parish Council. Thank you. And now I invite um, Ms. Miller, a local resident, to speak as a virtual participant. Ms. Miller, you have three minutes. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm speaking on behalf of the residents of Dilly Doon Cottage and representing the views of Woodchester residents, the two properties opposite Y Valley View. Once again, committee, thank you for handling this application with such care. There is great potential for this proposal to detrimentally affect the residents of Simmons Yat West, and we appreciate your due diligence. In the first committee, I outlined three main concerns which I believe are still valid. Firstly, the dangerous precedent applications such as this present. The large size of the property relative to the surrounding gardens is not reflective of the properties of Simmons Yat West, whose typically large and often wooded gardens provide the green space, separating plots, a space for nature, and preserve the scenic beauty of the AOMB. Secondly, the development fails to meet the requirements of the National Planning Policy Framework and the Local Neighbourhood Development Framework. In addition, limited access to local amenities and rural nature of this new development in an AOMB where sustainability is of the utmost importance does not make this new development suitable nor sustainable. Thirdly, the road access to the site. We have the narrow Ashes Lane, which although won't be used for construction deliveries, will be used by the crew to access the site entrance and temporary car park on the property. There will be an increase in traffic, as with all construction, but the volume this construction mandates, as well as the already crumbling surface of Ashes Lane, is a big concern. In addition, although the access to the site from the B4164 has been clarified with the confirmation vehicles will use the part of the driveway on the adjacent property to unload, there is still real, real concern that these large vehicles will have to turn in the B4164. As you may not be aware, the location proposed for unloading adjoins to a single carriageway section of the B4164, so there is the question of vehicle turning and reversing in the road. As per the previous meeting, there was some debate on the importance of the AOMB on the decision of this application. Only local authorities or the Secretary of State can give permission for the development in an AOMB. As per the Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000, a local planning authority whose area contains all or part of an area of outstanding natural beauty has the power to take all such action as appears to them expedient for the accomplishment of the purpose of conserving and enhancing the natural beauty of the AOMB. We believe that this new development in Simmons Yap will not enhance or conserve the beauty of this area. The shoehorning of such a large development on a relatively small plot will degrade the beauty of the local area, which in turn will have far reaching effects. The trend of splitting pots of land to develop monopolising and the housing boom in the area could be disastrous for Simmons Yak West. And I do ask, where will we draw the line on these infill plots of people splitting land? As you can see from the numerous objections to this development that is not welcomed by the local community, 
As councillors responsible for the AOMB, we hope that you can consider the values of the local community, the detrimental impact of this proposal for, with its construction and sustainability, as well as the far-reaching effects on the AOMB. Thank you, councillors, for hearing my objections and committee members. Thank you, Ms. Miller. I um, just over the three minutes. Can I now ask uh, Mr. Price to make a presentation on, on behalf of the applicants? Thank you, Chair. We knew from the outset that this site required a sensitive design approach and that a standard house would not be appropriate or good enough. We undertook a detailed evaluation of the site constraints, pattern of development, local vernacular, and the AOMB landscape character. This provided us with useful information to develop the design approach for the site. The result is a bespoke, high-quality, sustainable family home that embraces the design expectations of adopted policy. The dwelling will continue the existing pattern of development and rhythm of the street, consistent with the adopted NDP policies. The plot size and dwelling to plot ratio is comparable to other properties in the area and will allow for meaningful native landscaping to assimilate the dwelling into the landscape context. The design also works with the site levels, which were terraced over 15 years ago, meaning there will be no need to dispose of any spoil off-site and no risk to ground stability. We have also amended the scale and design, including a reduction in the height and size of the property to achieve the support of the planning and landscape officers, which is key given the site's location within the Y Valley AOMB. The Council's further assessment of the proposal against the Y Valley AOMB Management Plan also confirms no conflict with the policies or objectives of, of this document. I was confirmed no objection to both the safety of the access and the capacity of the local highway network to accommodate the very modest increase in traffic associated with this three-bed house. To clarify, highways have scrutinised the access in some detail, requested amendments and are happy that it will function safely in terms of parking, manoeuvrability and visibility. All deliveries can be made via the B4164, utilising the existing access to Y Valley View, thus avoiding the need to use Ashes Lane. This allowance is written into the sale contract. The design also focuses on minimising the future carbon impact of the house. The form is a simple rectangular shape, which will aid in achieving a super-insulated airtight structure that minimises heat loss. This will be complemented by a low-carbon heating system, solar PVs and electric vehicle charging points. The glazing will be specialist tinted glass to ensure there is no, no unacceptable light pollution. And water consumption will be minimised with the rainwater harvesting system and surface water will be managed sustainably. The Council Ecologists and Natural England also confirmed that no objection to the ecological impact of the development and with the proposed biodiversity enhancement measures, a net gain in the biodiversity value of the site will be achieved. We have worked hard to ensure that there are no technical base objections from any council consultees. We are confident that this high quality, sympathetically designed and energy efficient house will make a positive contribution to the architectural, architectural diversity of the area, this being a key expectation of core strategy policy SD1 and the MPPF. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent timing. Exactly three, three minutes. Um, thank you. And now. Um, I will now request that the public speaker uh, leave the Zoom meeting and return to the public gallery. I remind them that they can watch the live stream of this meeting on the Council's YouTube website or channel. Okay. Yep, she's done. Okay. Um, I can now call on Councillor Watson, the local member for this item. She is attending virtually and speaks first, and she has the right to speak at the end of the debate. She does not have a vote. Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you very much as well for allowing me to actually attend this meeting via Zoom. Um, I would like to thank colleagues for deferring this application to enable the case officer the time to reference the Y Valley AOMB management plan and ask for a geotechnical survey to be carried out prior to any constructions works. Since our last committee meeting, uh, there have been some wins. 
Firstly, it is the first time in two years I have seen the Y Value AUMB management plan so comprehensively referenced in a report, and I hope that this will be repeated in future applications. Two, no deliveries or construction vehicles will use the Ashes Lane to ensure the structural integrity of the boat. And three, that a substructure geotechnical survey will be carried out to ensure that there is no land movement from this development. However, concerns remain. Firstly, access to the site is via the driveway of Y Valley View on and off the B4164. Y Valley View is up for sale, and who is to say that the new owners will allow access rights? Two, the impact on the local community. Ms Miller has outlined uh, the residents' objections to this development, and the Parish Council has made it quite clear that it has already met its housing target. Whereas the applicant might move on, the community will live through and with this development forevermore. As elected members, our role is being a community leader who represents and engages the community. However, in planning, the community is the last to find out about the planning application and is only given one month's notice to offer their view on a development taking place in their parish. Whereas the applicants and the agents have been working with the local planning authority for many months to achieve their plans. Consequently, the business of planning and the need for housing is weighted against the community. In this case, the community is powerless and I am powerless. I would like to see planning plan houses for my grandchildren's grandchildren to plan for the future, but instead the only policy frameworks that we can use plan housing on a five to 10 year basis. We plan for the, we plan for the present and not for the future. Forgive me for my melancholic musings on the current planning system, but I think we have to be honest and transparent about our role and the actors involved. I am grateful for the wins that we have gained by de uh, deferring this application. And despite, as the agent says, that there are no objections from the statutory consultees, including the landscape officer, I ask you to consider the needs of the community and refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watson. I now open the debate. The first speaker I've got is Councillor Summers. Thank you, Chair. Um, I didn't. I didn't visit the, on the site visit, so this is only my view. So, but I am concerned. I noted the landscape officer suggests that the building is too large. Now we seem to have included here a holiday let. Uh, so I'm suggesting this may be more than just a residential. It's more like a business. As far as I, it's including a business, as far as I can see. And I'm not sure if this should be carried forth because uh, I, 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 I can go with a residential, maybe a little bit smaller, but the added holiday let does overpower things. And I, I believe is we shouldn't be Simmons Yacht shouldn't be a business as such. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bishop, do you want to, or Ms. Webster? Just explain. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Summers, so this application is for a dwelling itself. The holiday let is part of Y Valley View, so will be sold with part of Y Valley View and not linked to this new proposed dwelling. Yeah, it's already there. Uh, yeah and the holiday let's already there, so that's already in existence. It's not, not part of this application. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to thank the Planning Officer for a very comprehensive report. And I have to say, I can see no, now can see no good planning reason to refuse this application. So I will move the recommendation <coughs> for approval. Councillor Summers. Councillor Rowe. Sorry, Councillor Rowe. Sorry. Councillor Johnson's next. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> like Councillor Andrews, I can see no obvious reason for refusal of this application, but I was disturbed uh, to hear the number of 
various parts of the NDP which had apparently been breached in this, obliga uh, in this application uh, and that does concern me because of the reputation for NDPs generally and I wonder perhaps if, um, if the uh, uh, planning officer could comment on that. I, I, I can't remember the numbers that were quoted. It was in the, the part that Mr. Evans read out to us, but there were quite a number of them. Can the officers comment on that? Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Um, as regards the numbers, uh, as members will be aware, the uh, course strategy provides for a minimum, not a maximum number. Um, and yes, uh, which have done uh, have done well in terms of they've they've reached the the minimum number, but it's not but it's not a ceiling on it. They've got to 77. It was 65 originally. Um, so uh, and that that additional those additional uh, number of units are aren't, aren't consider, considered to be over and above, which would be create um, issues of social cohesion within the local community. So one additional unit would not would not um, be an issue there. Um, officers have assessed the application in line with the uh, the NDP and do not consider there are breaches of the ND, 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 NDP policies, uh, and that's fully contained within the report, Chairman. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. My, my first time attending in person, I've seen you all on Zoom for a while. But, um, the issue I have, or would like clarification on really, would be about the parking for offloading at the bottom. As I understand it, permission has been granted for vehicles to park at the bottom to offload, to take materials up, but we're now being told if the property is being sold, that might not be granted. I wonder if that, you could just clarify if that is actually written in as a condition. Thank you. Um, so the, the frontage um, along from the road, there's about 15 metres of frontage, but Hi Highways Land actually goes up part of Y Valley View Driveway, which is where the lorries can then offload from there. Um, if, you, if you need me to get a plan up at all, no. It's, um, it, it just, so it's a Highways Land all across that frontage there. Okay. So there's no actual legal issue with lorries parking up on Highways Land or something? No. Thank you, Chair. Um, there's no objections from the statutory consultees and uh, the rewritten report or amended report, especially with regard to the AOMB, I thought was fairer to the point of quite forceful. It was, you know, it did jump out, out at you. Um, and because of that, because of the um, site visit and the complete thoroughness that we've seen with this one, uh, I'm going to be voting with officer recommendation today. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank, thank you, Chair. I'm going to start by just quoting uh, briefly from the case officer's uh, revised report, uh, page 70 in the penultimate paragraph, where she says, <clears throat> the amended plans received on the 17th of November 2021, I, I will forgive that as a typo for 2020, were then reassessed against the management plan, the NPPF, the core strategy and the NDP policies, which all contain significant references and requirements for the Y value AONB. Well, I'm not aware, actually, that the NPP contains any references, let alone significant ones, to the Y value AONB, which is why I very much endorse uh, Councillor Watson's appreciation that uh, the y, y value AONB's ma management plan is now appropriately referenced. So let's just quickly re review what, um, how, how the uh, policies in the AONB management plan have been addressed in this uh, in the schema. I, I, <clears throat> I recognise that the landscape officers uh, revised their recommendation following uh, the revision of the plans in 2020. Uh, when their house was shortened uh, very marginally, but uh, as far as I can see, really no amendments were made to the landscaping itself. Uh, so we really look at what the impacts of this building are on uh, the intricate pattern of Scottish settlements, small fields, etc., uh, that is um, uh, important to the Y Valley Management Plan, to the picturesque and dramatic panoramic landscapes, the visual amenity, and she takes the view that uh, there is no um, negative impact. She does appreciate that there is an impact on the sense of tranquility, naturalness, wildness, at least in this part of the Simmons Yard, 
by the intensification of development, albeit considers that it is acceptable. In terms of um, uh, uh, WVL3, that, that deals uh, in the way evaluating a and B's management plan with landscape character assessment uh, uh, to inform local distinctiveness. Um, and she says that the street stream Street scheme uh, scene drawing that is uh, presented in the application addresses that. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure that it does, but that's certainly have you. Um, I do think, though, that um, whether or not uh, a member take the view that uh, the, um, the the applicant uh, the applica applicant ha application has uh, adverse implica implications for those qualities that are identified in the Y Value Management Plan or not are, are very much from members to decide. My um, concern really is with the design of the building itself. The fenestration remains chaotically proportioned and weakly detailed. I do feel very much that it doesn't uh, um, appreciate that, those characters of local distinctiveness, certainly uh, not the sort of simple sashes and side-hung casements which would complement local character and distinctiveness. Uh, so that is my view. Thank you, Chair. Are there any other speakers in this debate? No? Right. Can I now um, call on um, the officers to give a thing? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, and uh, thank you, members, for, um, for deferring this application uh, previously to, to enable the officers to enhance the report uh, and for the inclusion of the um, Y Valley um, management uh, ass assessment of it. Um, officers um, in the background papers had uh, had undertaken that, that work, but as you see, this is now um, in the papers now uh, for four members and the landscape officer um, fully supports the proposal. You've heard the issues relating to um, the, uh, the, the construction I issues uh, for the site, and that will be control controlled with a construction management plan uh, and that will be heavily controlled in, in, that, in, that, in that respect. Um, likewise, there's a condition at, um, on, the, uh, on the permission as well, on the recommendation for a geotechnical survey to be undertaken to ensure that is, that, that is controlled as well. The, the application has been fully assessed by your officers and by consultees. Um, when we received the application and that resulted in further amendments uh, being made to the proposal to make it acceptable to to bring to committee uh, with a with a favourable recommendation, we've reached a point there where that that's been achieved, and the officers have, have quite clearly put that forward to you today for for approval. Uh, I'm I'm satisfied, Chairman. There's been a good rounded debate on the issues uh, considered, and uh, happy for the members to c c continue with the vote. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, and finally, um, local member Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you for the debate. Um, I think that, um, for me, uh, despite um, views from officers, um, I have to agree with Councillor Milne that uh, this development does not conserve or enhance the scenic beauty of the eastern face of the Simmons Yet West and the Y Valley AOMB. It doesn't protect the area, area's character as outlined in the Y Valley AOMB management plan um, under Zone 9 of the Y Gorge. And, um, but I am, as I said in my pre-speech, powerless because um, the community's views, the parish council views, and my views are not supported by officers. So I have to accept that, um, yeah, we are powerless um, uh, and with, with what has been presented to you. So I do thank you for um, your deferral and for the opportunity to bring a focus to the, I think that the battles that we face within the Y Valley AOMB, um, that to, to try and preserve our unique distinctiveness is, um, is a difficult one. Um, Anyway, but thank you for your time, and um, yeah, thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Council Watson. Can, can um, I'll now move to the vote. I believe we have the re officer's recommendation uh, proposed by, I believe, Councillor Andrews, seconded by Councillor Roan. Um, can I ask or remind people, I don't think anyone was absent from uh, of members of the committee from this debate. So can I ask those in favor of the, officer, the resolution as moved? Those against? Abstentions? One. Then that motion is carried. Can I now ask for a short break, comfort break, and can I ask that the live stream be turned off?
I'm sure members were enjoying the air quality from the traffic down the uh, road outside, it was sampling the air quality. Right. Now uh, we'll. Can I ask now that the YouTube channel is uh, okay? Right. Can I welcome people back to the meeting? Um, can I uh, um, request that the public speakers for uh, Agenda Item 7, Dr. Geeson, representing Brayton Parish Council via Zoom, and Mr. Thomas, the applicant's agent attending, join the meeting? Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Dr. Geeson and Mr. Thomas. I will uh, thank you for joining the meeting. I, I will invite you to speak following the officer's presentation. Ms. Gibbons. Thank you, Chairman. I hope you can hear me there. Thanks, uh, thank you to the members for visiting the site yesterday. I would draw members' attention um, to the update sheet that was circulated. <clears throat> I also understand that members received a letter from the agent yesterday evening addressing some of the questions that were posed during the site visit. The application site is demarked by the Red Star, is located on the southern side of Kingsacre Road, approximately 3.5 kilometres to the west of Hereford City Centre. It lies within the parish of Brainton. Next slide, please. The application site is outlined in red on the top slide and is accessed via Brainton Lee Road from Kingsacre Road. The red star marks the site on the aerial photograph at the bottom and you can see the Wyvale Garden Centre and Nursery to the northern side of the road and this helps to, also helps to look at the pattern of development in the locality. Next slide please. The site benefits from outline planning permission for 15 dwellings following an appeal decision against the refusal of planning permission. This related to all, ma all matters were reserved with the exception of access. Subsequently, reserved matters approval was sought for matters in relation to appearance, scale, layout and landscaping in 2017 and this was approved in 2019. During the course of the application submission, the number of dwellings were reduced to 10 this was, re was required to mitigate against protected species habitats within, habitats within the site. Works have commenced on site and the site benefits from an extant planning permission for 10 dwellings as described in the report. This application seeks to vary a condition associated with the planning permission. In this instance, they are seeking a variation to the approved plans attached to the reserve matters approval. Therefore, the matters that are, are to be considered are layout, scale, appearance and landscaping. Effectively, this is an alternative scheme to that approved. Matters of principle are not being revisited as this has already been established. Conditions attached to the outline planning, outline planning permission continue to apply. This, site deta this slide details the layout as approved on the left and the layout as now proposed and these were also inserted into your committee report for, for ease. The protected species mitigation area remains to the west of the site, and you may recall that we looked at that yesterday, and the same road, road layout has been proposed for both sites, both um, schemes. The number of units remains as per the previously approved scheme. Next slide, please. Turning to the photographs of the site um, as it currently, currently is, the top left photograph is looking towards the properties on Brainton Lee. The top right to the southeast corner of the site with the mature tree line to the southern boundary. The bottom left is to the southwest corner of the site looking um, towards Wyvale Woods. And the bottom right is the eastern boundary of the site and shows the area that will form part of the habitat mitigation area. Next slide, please. Some further photographs here. The top left is taken to the south of the site, looking back towards the site access, and you can see Cranston Lodge in the distance. Top right is again the eastern boundary that includes the mitigation area. Bottom left is the large mature trees to the west of the entrance to the site. This was next to the turning area and close to where we parked yesterday. Uh, bottom left, 
So the middle photograph is taken on the site entrance looking along the private gated driveway to Brainton, at Brainton Lee. Um, and the mature trees that line, and you can see the mature trees that line this driveway. You note you also see the mature tree, large mature tree that's located within the site. Um, and on your layout plans, um, you, this is demarked with the red circle, which also shows the root protection zone. The bottom right is taken within the site, looking back towards this tree line and towards Lambourne Gardens. Next slide, please. The site plan was amended during the course of this application to address concerns raised about impact on amenity and street scene. Concerns were raised not only by local residents, but by officers as well. In addition, further detail was provided in respect of the landscape and boundary treatments, and these are now fully detailed on the landscape plan that's on the screen. These amendments have satisfied the concerns raised by the, local, uh, by the council's landscape officer. The ward council has also expressed a view that the proposed planting to the southern boundary should be of mature stock to help screen development from Wyville Woods area to the south. This matter was raised with the applicants and a condition has been suggested and included on the update sheet. This also addresses a concern raised by the parish council in their representation. Next slide, please. This slide uh, shows the elevations of the proposed dwellings for all plots. As described in the report, these are a range of materials including natural slates of the pitch roofs, red facing brickwork, through colour render, dark stained horizontal timber cladding and grey aluminium windows and doors. Whilst not necessarily traditional in appearance, officers would concur with a supporting submission in that the proposed materials are in keeping with previous approvals and will settle in well with materials found in the local area and create their own distinct sense of place alongside other private and discrete developments nearby. Officers, mem officers would draw members attention again to the report and the details in respect of the sustainability criteria as this was an issue raised on the site visit. In terms of energy efficient design, the large areas of glazing on the south elevations and roof lanterns allow passive solar warming. The properties also feature solar thermal panels amongst other energy efficiency measures and approaches and officers are content that the proposals represent an approach to energy efficiency that goes beyond the requirements of current planning policy and building regs. Following a query in respect of rainwater harvesting during the site visit, a condition has been discussed with the applicant's agent and a condition is also included on the update sheet. Next slide, please. Whilst I trust the site visit was useful to help understand the context of the site and in particular the re relationship of the dwellings to Brainton Lee to the east, Lambourne Gardens and Cranston Lawn Lodge to the north. Whilst these photographs are, aerial photographs are maybe a little dated, they are useful to provide a better context, um, a, a bit of context to understand how the site relates to those neighbouring properties. Next slide please. The impacts of in respect of privacy, overlooking, and the relationships between the properties has been detailed within the report, and that report includes plan extracts to assist in your understanding. To answer a query, query on the site visit, the distances from the rear of the dwellings to Lambourne Gardens have been carefully considered, and the distance from the rear elevation of plot five to the dwelling's side gable, to the dwelling of number five Lambourne Gardens side um, gable is over 35 metres, with the tree line and closed board fence intervening as shown on the bottom photographs. The red lines on the plan here show those distances as marked. Mm -hmm. Officers consider this relationship to be acceptable. The relationship with the dwellings on Brainton Lee, the houses to the east, can also can be seen on the photographs on the on the top and have also been carefully considered. <coughs> Excuse me. These again are detailed within the report with the relevant plans and comparison to the approved scheme. Next slide, please. Nearly all letters received during the course of this and, all pre and the previous applications raise the matter of localised surface water flooding. Officers are very aware of the experience of the local residents <coughs> and the frequency of such events. When these concerns were again raised during the consider of consideration of the original approved matters, um, reserve matters approval, it felt necessary to hold, the officers felt it necessary to hold its processing until the drainage strategy was agreed with the council's land drainage consultant. This involved a lengthy period where applicants and the council's consultant reconsidered the matters raised at outline and reserve matter stages, looked at the drainage strategy, 
and looks at it against, alongside the newer guidance and advice relating to climate change. All drainage conditions were subsequently discharged and only then were the reserve matters approval issued in 2019 when officers were satisfied that the layout proposed could accommodate the drainage strategy. This scheme relies upon the same approved drainage strategy. This has been described in the report. The Council's land drainage consultant has confirmed that they have no objections on, my, on this basis and officers continue to be satisfied that the, that the site drainage can be accommodated within the layout proposed and the matter, does not need, the matter of flood risk does not need to be revisited as part of this application. For clarification, the surface water drainage strategy agreed for the extant permission promotes the use of ring soakaways to serve the access route in residential properties with foul water connecting to the main sewer. The surface water ring soakaways are designed for the one in a hundred year event plus a 40% for climate change. The strategy plan is shown on the slide here. To conclude, the principle of development has been established through the granting of an outline planning permission and the subsequent reserve matters approval. This application very simply looks to consider a revision to the approved house types and the impacts of those specific changes on character and appearance of the locality and the amenities and living conditions of local residents. Officers consider the design approach is appropriate within the wider context and are of the opinion that the proposed dwellings are of a scale and form that would result in an acceptable form of development taking into account the context of the site. No conflict with the development plan policy is detected and accordingly, in, as the application proposal, application proposal complies with the development plan and without material considerations indicating to the contrary, the reserve matters approval should be granted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll now go to the speakers. We have Dr. Geeson from the Parish Council Brayton Parish Council, who is a virtual participant. Dr. Geeson, you have three minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this site has a long and fraught planning history dating back to uh, at least 2012 and runs through many developers. The officer's report in front of you summarises this in section three, uh, but that barely does it justice. Uh, any member who has had time or inclination to follow the various links provided will now realise that. Uh, it's no wonder there have been so many uh, public objections. Uh, I just want to make three points. Uh, the first is that this is not the same development as was the one approved on appeal. What, it, what is procedurally a variation of a previously approved condition is in fact an alternative scheme, as paragraph 6.4 of the officer's report makes clear. In the view of Brainton Parish Council, the new proposal isn't an improvement. It's worse for the reasons you can read in paragraphs 5, 1 and 5, 2. This is not the scheme that the Parish Council and local residents fought so long and so hard to achieve. The time and effort that your officers previously took to consider and condition the current approval to make it acceptable was considered. This is now all on the scrappy. My second point is that we, as the Parish Council, are disappointed that the observations we made in February contained in 5.1 of your report, appear to have been dismissed by the Landscape and Ecology Officers in their comments, paragraphs 4, 3 and 4. Like so many rural areas bordering suburbs, Brainton is scarred by developments that present a very hard, sharp edge when viewed from the outside in the country. In this case, the view from Wyvale Wood to the south, which is run by Herefordshire Wildlife Trust. I can provide other examples, including from my own estate, of such visual intrusions and such landscape damage should not be allowed anymore. Accordingly, if the scheme is approved, Brainton Parish Council would ask the committee and officers subsequently to reconsider if additional conditions are required for landscaping the southern boundary and to provide increased security for the protected area. Finally, Chair and Committee, the paragraph 618 to 620 of the officer's report cover drainage and flood risk. Time will only show if this is right. All I would do is ask the committee and officers to recognise and remember one thing for the future. There is a serious and growing flood risk across northwest Hereford generally because of increased overland flow uh, and inadequate drainage infrastructure. We cannot simply allow to, uh, developments to continue to attempt to deal with their own water issues and ignore this wider picture. 
there needs to be a strategic scheme covering, as a minimum, Brainton, Stretton, Suggers, Burghill and Three Elms before many more piecemeal approvals of this sort are given. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Perfect timing. Mr Thomas, who's uh, the agent for, for the applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning, members. I speak in support of the officer recommendation that the application be approved. The application seeks to make amendment to the approved and extant scheme by way of improved house types to maintain the high quality of the local area. Your officers have clarified in the report that the matters to be considered are only layout, scale, appearance and landscaping. When determining this application, it is very important to acknowledge that the existing planning permission for 10 dwellings has been lawfully implemented and could be carried on at any stage. It is also important to note that the applicant has at every opportunity responded to the concerns of neighbours, most obviously in the positioning and orientation of Plot 1, which as your officers note, overcomes potential overlooking of properties in Lambourne Gardens. In respect of access and landscaping, the proposals are as per the extant permission. The area set aside for protected species is retained, and the layout makes necessary provision for tree protection. The application has drawn no objection from the Council's ecologist, landscape officer or the Highway Authority. The officer report also makes it clear that surface water drainage has already been approved in full. However, in response to third party representations, we confirmed that professional specialist drainage consultants were engaged to design a robust drainage scheme for the 10 dwellings already approved. This has satisfied both Herefordshire Council and Balfour Beatty. The Council's Land Drainage Officer and Lead Local Flood Authority have confirmed no objection to this application. The main focus of this application therefore centres on the alternative designs promoted. These new designs take into account the increased demand among home buyers for open plan areas on the ground floor with a separate study for home working, an increasing necessity given the new norm of working from home. We endorse your officer's opinion that the appearance of the dwellings is representative of good design and in accordance with relevant policies, and that the proposals would not give rise to unacceptable overlooking of adjoining private gardens. Officers further confirm that parking levels are appropriate and the access road and shared surfaces will all be permeable. With respect to sustainable construction, the buildings are designed to a higher standard than current building regulations and has been designed with EV charge points in mind. The glazing will not be dark or heavily tinted, but will incorporate low emissivity coatings which help to retain the heat inside the dwelling. In conclusion, we agree with your officers that the application is in accordance with the, de the development plan and that planning permission should therefore be granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Now I ask the local member, who is Councillor Matthews, to open the debate. Thank you, Chairman. He has the right to speak at the end of the debate, summing up. Thank, Thank you, you, Chairman. Thanks. First of all, I would like to um, read a statement from the local residents. They asked me, because two of them were quite poorly, and they asked me to read it out. The primary objection to the development of Brandon Lee's site is the lack of a comprehensive plan for flood control. And I'll explain the reason why I'm raising this issue as I go later on. <clears throat> Drainage plus regular maintenance, this must cover not just the site but the broader area of Brayton Lee and the surrounding area which are all heavily affected by flooding after heavy rainfall. There are some long-standing flooding issues in the area, therefore it will be critical on this site that the Authority monitor the development to ensure that attenuation is provided and maintained for the long term. This was Martin Jackson from Amy who made that uh, comment back agreed a few years ago. There is no evidence to suggest that the site has been notified to the local planning authority by the Environment Agency as having critical drainage problems. As such, no risk assessment has been required this was the parish council and other observations and myself, which we've raised several times. The government inspector stated in a report on the 28th of January 2014 that whilst given permission to build on this site, she nevertheless stated in conditions annexed at paragraphs 8 and 9. D 
Development shall not commence until a scheme for the provision of surface drainage works has been submitted and improved in writing by the local authority. No building shall be occupied until surface water drainage works have been implemented and approved by the local planning authority. Before these details are submitted, an assessment shall be carried out on the potential for disposing of surface water by means of a sustainable drainage system and should provide information about the method to delay and control the surface water discharge. Also measures taken to prevent pollution of receiving groundwater. Foul water and surface water discharge must be drained separately from the site and the appropriate reference numbers are given from the planning inspector. The applicable drain under A438 uh, Kings Acre Road is, is not clear. The adjacent culvert drainage is damaged and overgrown. This was supposed to be a lead flood water away towards Yezu Brook. There is now no drainage infrastructure on the north side of Kings Acre Road to allow this to happen. The Parish Council has consistently said that there needs to be comprehensive drainage plan for the whole area of northwest section of Hereford before there is more development. Otherwise, each successive scheme just pushes the problem on and makes the problem worse elsewhere. Uh, uh, the Brainley site should never be given permission to build until uh, uh, the, all these things are carried out. Again, inspectors report. Additional considerations to modify the unsightly intrusion of 10 houses in black cladding in the midst of green fields. Either limit this to a few or revert to appropriate brickwork in keeping with properties in the immediate area. And you, the officers have dealt with the statutory distance. Uh, that's the comments which I've uh, uh, agreed to read from the local residents. Um, uh, Councillor, uh, Mr. Geeson, uh, uh, Brenton Parish Council has re kindly referred to a few uh, technical and appropriate issues, and I agree wholeheartedly with his comments. The reason, members, I requested a site visit and for this application to come to committee was because of the local parish council and over 50 local residents strongly objected. This has been going on for many years. Uh, uh, Mrs. Gibbons and myself have worked tirelessly to try and resolve it, so I thought the only way was to bring it to this committee so that you could look at all the facts and, and, uh, and deal with them. There are three main issues of concern. Please uh, uh, refer to flooding, but I will explain in a minute, Chairman. The area generally, and particularly the adjoining development, has suffered quite serious flooding a, a number of times over recent months and in the past. <coughs> This is caused by the excessive water runoff from the sloping agricultural land to the south of the proposed development. This is just one, there is just one ditch to take this water flow situated to the west of the Brenton Lee. The ditch runs into a mere 12-inch pipe passing under the main 8438 road and emptying onto slightly lower land to the north of the highway. With no adequate water course or other drainage to take it into the Yezu Brook, which is several hundred yards away. A lot of mud and, and uh, debris is washed into the pipe, and when this is obstructed, serious flooding occurs. Brainton Lead Estate floods uh, directly from water from the sloping off land. I have worked tirelessly with officers to try and address this issue, but unfortunately the landowners are not prepared to allow the necessary work to take place at present to help alleviate the problem. The applicants have submitted an attenuation system to address the issue in respect of this site, and I understand that the drainage officer's view is that it is acceptable, but it's uncertain certain what impact it might have overall. <coughs> and after all, uh, the drainage officer, <laughs> uh, after all, had no objections to the adjoining site of Brenton Lee. They raised no objections then, and it's flooded frequently ever since. So I'm asking you to take a very close look at what drainage system is proposed to make sure that we don't get a continued situation uh, because even if it's held on site, it's got to drain off gradually somewhere. So that's why I'm raising the serious issue of, of uh, flooding. I must add that the developers have been cooperative in trying to uh, address this problem. Now, in respect of IWIS, Chairman, the inspector raised issues in regard to poor visibility when agreeing, 
when egressing the site at its junction to the A438. Vehicles parking in a nearby lay-by and re recommended that the lay-by be greatly reduced in size to help improve the situation. This has not been fully completed. Uh, loss of privacy, that's been addressed and you saw yourself yesterday the situation and it's, it's in a fair distance and the uh, case officers already ad addressed that issue. <clears throat> um, I've asked, uh, uh, the main issue folks is, although officers have said before that a drainage system is suitable, that's proved not to be the case on the adjoining site and others which has caused serious problems. Um, I spoke to the uh, planning officer and we've uh, added two additional conditions or she kindly asked about the landscaping to make sure the landscaping is mature uh, particularly along the, the, uh, the uh, uh, southern side of the boundary because of the, uh, the nature reserve at the other at the backing onto it not to spoil the appearance of that so the informatives clearly says that and it should also be brought to the applicant's attention that the conditions imposed on the outline planning permission granted on appeal under reference, there's various numbers here, and any subsequent approval of these conditions should be strictly adhered to. Um, uh, my own view is, uh, you know, it's time this matter was dealt with and a, con and a decision made, but it's all very fine for these so-called specialists and people to say the drainage will work. As I said, the adjoining site was approved by draining officers and everybody else and it's flooded on a regular basis ever since so i ask you members to carefully consider whether you feel that the drainage system in place is adequate because if it's not not only does it flood there but it floods 10 or 12 hours in king's acre road when the when the pipe blocks so it's quite a serious issue so i ask you to carefully consider your, uh, this the facts before you make a decision thank you Thank you, Councillor Manthus. Now we will open the debate. Can I remind members that uh, much of the principle of this development has been settled not by this council, which I believe, committee, which I, I believe refused the original apl application for housing on this particular site, but that has been overturned by the inspector, and unfortunately, the inspector rules on the issue of, de of the principle of development and on the on the drainage issue. So. Unfortunately, we're left with the quality of the quality of the development and design of the of, of the housing on the particular site. Um, Councillor Rowe. Thank you, Chair. I didn't realise I was first up. Um, for you, Chair, could um, Miss Gibbons please confirm that this committee today need only concern themselves with landscape appearance, layout, and scale of the homes, the houses. Yeah, they're being, it's a reserve matters approval, so it's okay. those issues, yeah. So we, we can chat all we like about drainage and how big the drains need to be in flood water, and that will make absolutely no difference to the outcome and the decision that we come to today. The drainage strategy works with the layout as proposed, and that's the same layout that has already been approved and the same layout that, and the same drainage strategy that's already been approved. Okay. So we did pause on the last application to make sure the layout and the drainage work together. And we're satisfied that that is the case, and that's the same layout that's already been approved. Okay, so ours so is really yeah. a, an aesthetical decision about how nice they look, what they're going to be made of, the sizes, and everything else. That's it. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. I won't get into dr drainage. Most of the drainage problems, I believe, are probably caused by a 12 inch pipe and obsolete drainage, which we have throughout the county. So. That needs to be sorted, but not at this time. Um, I am concerned I, about climate, climate friendly homes. Now, it's proposed, and I would use the word proposed here, and it's used quite substantially, that uh, there will be um, solar, uh, some kind of ground or air source heating, which I'm not sure. I like to see a little more than proposed. Uh, I, so I'm asking you how many houses we'll have climate friendly heating whether it be solar air source or or ground source whatever and how many houses will actually have 
not support, as, as is used, but electrical, outside electrical plugs for cars in the future, because that's the way we're going. And they should be in at the beginning, not at the, e not when, uh, not at the end. So I just think that we need to look. How many houses will have electric sockets outside? And how many houses will be climate friendly as far as heat source, etc.? Thank you. Um, so there's a condition requiring all of the uh, properties to have the EV sockets, which is pretty standard now on most of the applications we're dealing with. Um, as you quite rightly say, is because it's becoming the new norm and an expectation for, for people who are buying those houses to have those. Um, in terms of the uh, solar uh, PV, um, I think we you should have received a letter last night as well from the agent that provided a bit more detail on that as opposed to what was... Um, in, in the actual application. Um, the, there is um, solar collectors for hot water, thermal panels, but there isn't solar panels for heating. And there's a very detailed description within that letter that was circulated to members about why that has been explored in this instance but can't be, can't be done. Um, and in respect of the ground source and air source heat pumps, that isn't something that is being proposed due to um, it, uh, the overall sustainability of the building. So the, the details of that, he's gone into in more detail on that in that letter as well, um, in that they, they wouldn't necessarily be um, effective or uh, efficient in this instance. Um, there's also issues in relation to noise from air source heat pumps and needs to be carefully considered if you're doing that and building it into the to the scheme from the outset as well as additional room for um, the plant and the associated uh, plant that's required to run those things that hasn't been included in this application there's detail but the whole energy efficiency as a whole has been considered in terms of design and the way that the building has been designed um, to maximize energies, energy efficiency. Um, and, and that, again, that's all in that letter in, in fully in more detail. Um, I didn't receive that until after the updates had gone out, so I wasn't able to include it, but it was circulated to all members yesterday. So one more question. If, if the government, Westminster, comes up with new planning, up, new planning guidelines about uh, heat source or air source, et cetera, et cetera, will uh, this particular application fall under that or will it n will it f not will it be grandfathered into the new regulations or not it will be part of the building reg if it was built into the building regulations then obviously they would have to comply with the most current but if this has been passed now building regulations is separate legislation okay thank you yes, thank you chair um can i just check with mr bishop or Ms. gibbons that um Paragraphs 15 to 24 of the inspector's report comprehensively deal with the drainage issues and that we can have no further influence over that? Yeah, effectively, yes. They dealt with the flood risk and drainage issues. Um, what we've done through the discharge of the conditions that the inspector imposed was to make sure that they work technically and to make sure that those were thoroughly explored um, with further... Um, further testing because they did further testing that they'd done at the outline um, and also with the newer guidance which related more to climate change which came in in 2016 post inspector's decision so um, yeah that that matter was dealt with that outline right thank you very much for that so we are left with the design and appearance of this um, development and um, this appears to me like as, as a variation of an existing application that has been approved therefore we have to decide whether or not the variation is an improvement on the existing um, application that has been approved and I would suggest that um, at this stage it is so I will propose that we accept the officer's recommendation this and this application should be approved thank you chair Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, so my problem is with the layout 
It's to do with the orientation of the houses and the roofs and whether they should include PV panels. Um, I know the officer's report uh, says a couple of things about this. It, it quotes the, um, the architect who sent us the email last night who said exactly the same thing. Solar PVs are not as attractive from a viability perspective as they once were and would only be used if absolutely necessary. I would say they are absolutely necessary. Uh, the report, the councillors, uh, the, the officer's report also says that uh, officers are satisfied that the proposals meet the aims and requirements of uh, policies SS7. Well, SS7 is a strategic policy requiring focus on a measures to address climate change. The council has specifically... Um, made a declaration about, council, uh, about climate change which demonstrates its importance and explains why policy SS7 should be given more weight, especially now, uh, much more than it was when uh, it was first uh, thought up. So it's not another policy requirement. It is an absolute necessity that we start building houses that include PV panels. What's of ultimate concern to me is that uh, council officers are ignoring the declarations that have been made by this council over climate change. So the absolute bottom line is that these houses should be orientated and designed much better. These houses are not fit to meet the challenges of the 21st century as climate change comes towards us. So I would say that having PV panels is, is of an absolute necessity and I cannot understand any architects working today who do not accept that but instead come up with yes but excuses as to why they haven't included them. They've included plenty of driveways for cars, they've included garages, they're not necessities in the same way as generating our own power in the 21st century is. So it's about time people started coming to their senses and designing these houses to include PV panels and all the other ways. The, the architect says it doesn't matter if they're facing south. Well, yes, they can face a bit west, they can face a bit east, east yes, a lot of energy is used in the mornings and the Council evenings. Welding, you've passed that would your be time. good. Okay, but the point is... We want PV panels on new houses. Can I just remind members that we do not have the power to insist. We might find it uh, important, but it, we do not have the powers to do that. And until government, government given us the powers, we've got to work within the, the remit we have. Councillor Mill. Uh, yes, thank, thank you, Chair, and um, thank you, Councillor Matthews, for inviting us to the site meeting yesterday. It was a, a useful exercise, um, particularly as you selected such a good day to do it in, and uh, we enjoyed um, wandering around the, uh, the site, the floristically abundant uh, um, uh, uh, um, place that it is. I, I just want to um, pick up on a query that I had at the site meeting yesterday concerning the lay layout and landscaping in as, as we are entitled to consider that under the, under the terms of the application today, um, with respect to the boundary treatment um, and uh, the, um, uh, we heard from Dr. Geeson how uh, uh, the uh, parish council has made comments about uh, their reservations about the boundary treatments as to the south and indeed to the wildlife reserve area the protected species area to, to, the, to the west of the site. Um, I always look at, at uh, applications with a view to how they're addressing infiltration. Um, and we heard yesterday that uh, the underlying um, drift geology is, is clay, essentially, so it doesn't naturally drain very well. Um, but we always need to try and guard against adding um, 
uh, impediments to infiltration through hard landscaping. And I, I do appreciate that uh, the application includes uh, for um, permeable tarmac. I'm not entirely sure what permeable tarmac is uh, for the, the driveway access. Uh, but I do see that in this amended application, uh, they've changed the, uh, the boundary treatments, uh, 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 that uh, western boundary uh, from a board grass margin as approved on the approved plan to a non-permeable tarmac pavement. And this is why I queried yesterday, because that non-permeable tarmac pavement not only exacerbates flooding, but it is entirely unnecessary, and it is inimical, I would suggest, to that the context of a development site against a protected species site. So we've got a, a change there, a material change there, which I would regard as deleterious to as against the approved plan. I think I've probably done my three minutes. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Oh, 36, I could, <laughs> I could have 20 seconds more. Well, if I had 20 seconds more, I would suggest then that um, uh, that uh, if, it, if, if members were minded to approve this, that this is conditioned back to the 2017 arrangement whereby it is a broad grass, grass uh, soft margin on that. Um, it's quite unnecessary to be a pavement. And, and maybe it's planted up with trees or, I don't know, residents put daffodils in it or something, uh, just to give it that buffer against the wildlife protection zone. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Most of what, uh, <coughs> uh, what I was going to say has already been said, and I won't take more of the committee's time. We are here today, as pointed out by <coughs> Councillor Selden, the only thing we can consider is the improvement. Is there an improvement or is there not? And whether or not we need PVC on windows, frankly, I do not believe that at all. Um, so I have some objections when people keep talking about we. Please don't include me in all of those comments. Can I suggest, Chairman, we move to the vote? It's fairly straightforward. I, I just wanted to say that um, I find it quite um, annoying that this um, committee is often being used to make political statements on global warming rather than focusing on what we're supposed to be doing here, and that's judging these planning applications on their own merits materially. And it's a waste of time um, to carry on with these uh, orange box sta grandstanding that goes on here and we should focus on what's important and I just want to make I want to make that statement as for this application I think it's an improvement one of the things I did like about it was the um, the inclusion of uh, home working which I think that is part of the, our future and I think if you, if you are, are a green or you want to um, reduce carbon emissions, um, getting people to work from home rather than having to drive to work is an improvement. So uh, I, I will be voting for this application. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just, uh, uh, was there anyone else indicating they wanted to speak? Oh, Councillor Fagan. Yeah, thank you. And I'd just like to say that I, I do welcome the inclusion of rainwater harvesting as one of the conditions. I, I think that um, given uh, climate change, it's, it's essential that new houses do have rainwater harvesting. Um, one of the things that I'm quite concerned about is that gas central heating is, um, has, has been chosen for this. And I can see the, um, th the, the reasoning for this, but I think that by the time that these houses are actually built, um, the gas w will have been excluded from central heating options by 2023 anyway. So potentially that will come under the building regulations that it will have to change uh, to air source heating and in which case actually solar PVs would be highly beneficial as they would be for a more detailed, um, uh, a more comprehensive plan um, for 
rainwater harvesting, which the architect has, um, or the agent has said is a, a lifestyle choice, but equally garages and um, sort of the changes that we're discussing are also lifestyle choices. So I think that um, enhanced rainwater harvesting would have, would have been an excellent scheme for this um, development, but I welcome the... Um, uh, what has been provided and also I just wanted to make sure that the um, I, I do agree with Councillor Milne about the soft margin and um, what I want to make sure is that the detailed habitat enhancement scheme ensures 100% hedgehog highways and uh, secure fencing for the protected species um, which I imagine will come under the um, the habitat enhancement scheme that has to be agreed by officers anyway. Thank you. Andrews. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Just a little point of information. I had to have my own gas boiler, only two years old, serviced last uh, two days ago. And I inquired of the engineer what was happening, and he said new gas boilers will have to incorporate a facility for being converted to hydrogen. If that's any help to anybody. Right. Are there any other? No, no one. Councillor Wilding, you've already spoken, but uh, just in. Thank you, Chair. I won't go over the same stuff. I just wanted to ask if we can put a condition in uh, that they reconsider putting solar PV on the roofs. Thanks. I don't think that's a condition. Uh, to reconsider is not a, a condition as such. We have to put in. Sorry. I don't know. I'll leave. It, it, that doesn't form no. part of the motion at the present time, Chairman. The motion is to uh, uh, the motion you have at the present time is one to uh, recommend approval uh, is to agree the officer's recommendation as set down. Can I can I just suggest before we move to the the, the summing up and then Councillor Matthews, just suggest we've had much at this meeting and a number of meetings about the alignment of housing. Now. Uh, Councillor Wilding insists that it has to be south, purely south siding. I've recently spoken to a, a couple of people who claim to be experts, and I'm not one, and say, no, that is not the case, that it is not the most efficient. That, uh, no, I'm not going to get into a debate about that. I'm suggesting that we Sorry, have Chair, a... you're making an opinion here, which okay. uh, I would dispute because I've been can reading I, up on it a I, lot. Can I, Councillor Wilding, can you please keep quiet? What I'm saying is I don't know, but what I suggest at a future, a future um, briefing or some, some training, we have someone with expertise. We have around this table too many amateur experts, and I think we ought to have someone with expertise to give us the truth as to what is the best alignment as far as uh, solar panels are concerned. That's merely a suggestion. I hope that, that uh, members and the officers will take on board that because we hear so much and, and it seems to change from time to time. But as I say, I've, I've, I've uh, um, spoken uh, uh, in, uh, with people who claim to be a, uh, expert on this particular issue and they, they dispute that as being the case. Anyway, Mr. Bishop or Ms. Gibbons, I don't know. Thank you, Chairman. Um, members have obviously fully debated this, uh, this proposal. Um, it is a difficult one. Uh, the members have, um, it's a site which was previously refused and uh, was uh, allowed by an inspector. And that's the fallback position. That's the fallback position for your consideration today. It's a site which has had planning permission. This is just to, to amend the design of the properties within, within that and a slight, uh, a slight variation in the uh, in the layout in terms of their, 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 their actual siting. That is essentially all you're looking at today because they've got the fallback position of the previous, of the previous scheme in any case. Drainage is all covered by that as well and so is landscaping. But as you, as you are aware from the, re, from the update report, uh, further enhancements have been agreed and also additional sustainability measures have been added to the proposal as well. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, well, there's very little to say, a very comprehensive debate, and I thank members for uh, their uh, comments. 
Um, only thing I would like to say, Chairman, is this issue of runoff from sloping land. I think that's got to be dealt with more seriously when outlying planning permission is granted to make sure that drainage issues can be dealt with satisfactorily rather than letting it progress and having to try and deal with the situation uh, further down the line. So that's the only thing. And uh, anyway, uh, that's it, Chairman, and thank you. Thank you. We have a, a recommendation a mo has been moved on the agenda, um, moved and seconded. Can we now have a, a vote? Those in favour of the recommendation? Those against? Abstentions? One. Then that motion is carried. Right, we'll move on to item eight, Robin's Nest at the, at the, at the Yard, Wooferton, Grange, Wyson. Can I ask the request that the public speaker for the agenda, Mr. Burton, local resident attending in person, join the meeting? Do members want a comfort break, by the way? Some are taking it anyway. Perhaps we better have a. Can we have a five minute come, come for break in this case? <laughs> right. Right.
Yeah, I think we can make a start, as I think everybody's here. We thought Councillor Stone was missing, but he's there now, <laughs> after this particular... <laughs> ...tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no, I hope not. <laughs> anyway. Right, we're dealing now with... Um... Sorry? Oh, so can we start the live stream, sorry? Is it started? Yes, it is started, thank you. Now, um... I welcome Mr. Burton. Sorry for the delay in, in doing that. Can I? Um, this is for application for uh, Robin's Nest, a change of change of um, use, as far as that's concerned. And our officer is Mr. Ollie Jones, who will make the presentation. Cheers, thank you, Chairman. Um, very good morning, members. Thank you to those who took the time to visit the site yesterday. Hopefully that proved to be useful um, in contextualizing the site. Whilst there are no formal updates um, on the update sheet before you this morning, there is just one point of clarification, um, and that's in that the proposed small lean-to extension would attach to the western elevation of the building and not the east, as otherwise stated. Um, that is, That does reflect the, the submitted plans and as assessed and covered in the report, but just to avoid any confusion in that regard. So, um, as Chairman's pointed out, the application seeks full planning permission for the use of the building for the storage of scaffolding and also for a motorcycle tyre fitting unit, again, together with that small lean-to extension as well. So, on the slide, um, the location of the site is demarked by the red star. The site is located to the north of the unclassified Wyson Lane, which leads west from Wyson and Brimfield. The site is within the parish of Brimfield and is located approximately four and a half miles to the south of Ludlow and forms part of a wider cluster of buildings which have historically been associated with the Grade 2 listed Woofton Grange, which lies just to the east of the site. Next slide, please. So the application site here is marked by the red edge, and the aerial photograph just shows the site within the context of the surrounding area. It includes the building on the site and its curtilage. That is the hard standing forecourt around it that you saw yesterday. Um, it doesn't include the building adjacent to the east, which is purpose for car restoration. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide just shows the general proposed layout of the site, as set out within the, office of, within the report at paragraph 1.2. Just under 300 square metres of the building would be purpose for commercial storage, um, that being for the housing of scaffolding used by local companies and marked on the submitted plan as the area in yellow. The motorcycle tyre fitting unit would be housed in a self-contained portion of the building, amounting to 34 square metres and blocked in red. Um, and there will be a photo of this to follow. Um, I know we didn't have a chance to have a look in, um, inside yesterday. Um, the supporting information supplied by the applicant states that the nature of the business would be largely internet-based, whereby wheels would be collected from the client's address and brought back to the workshop for new tyres to be fitted. However, the facility would also allow for motorcycles to drive directly to the site to allow work to be undertaken um, should the client so desire. Um, the remainder of the building would continue to be used um, for general storage. Next slide, please. Um, so as I said, the application also seeks permission for some operation development, which includes the provision of the small toilet block to the western elevation, which would also house an air compressor. The addition would extend 4.5 meters in depth and would comprise a pitch roof Roller shutter doors would serve to the southern elevation, providing access to um, the individual parts of the building, so the storage facility and also the um, tire fitting unit. The plans here show the front southern elevation and the eastern elevation, as, would, as is proposed. Next slide, please. So here you can see the western elevation um, showing the proposed lean-to extension, so quite a small um, add-on in context of the building. Um, that exists at present. Um, the south, southern elevation remaining unchanged could be seen, um, uh, the northern elevation rather, sorry, um, at the bottom of the slide, largely unchanged. Um, and if you go to the next slide, please. So this plan just shows the layout of, that, of the lean-to extension. So you've got um, toilet, washroom, and the air compressor to the north part, um, and access from um, both sides. Next slide, please. Um, here are just some three visualizations of the building, um, showing the roll roller shutter doors, 
so fairly minimal, um, very, fairly minimal changes externally. And I think if we go on to the next slide as well, just some more, um, largely the same as well. And the next one, please. Um, so this, this photo shows part of the building which is internally apportioned for the motorcycle tire fitting unit, um, which would be served by, directly by way of that new, new roller shutter door. Um, as is evident, it is self-contained insofar that it is partitioned off from the rest of the building, which would um, otherwise be used for, for storage. Um, next slide, please. So this photo in the slide shows the entirety of the site, the access that, that's taken off Weissen Lane in the foreground, um, and with the building obviously sub, um, subject to the application, positioned centrally within the photograph. Um, the building to the right is that that is used for um, car restoration purposes. And the next one, please. Um, so again, just shows the eastern part of the site. So you can see the roller, sh roller shutter door serving the motorcycle tire fitting unit um, and the sort of forecourt area. And then the building to the right, which isn't part of this application and is used for car restoration purposes. And if we have the next one, please. So again, we just stood to the front of the building um, and are looking in a northeasterly direction. Again, you can make out the building to the right, used for car restoration. In the distance, you can see um, a building associated with the lawful residential use of Lydia Place, um, the main dwelling of which is located just to the east, and there will be a photo of this shortly. If we have the next one, please. Um, this just shows the access out to the site, so we're looking in a southeasterly direction. Um, open agricultural land joins Weissen Lane um, to the south. And the next one, please. So yeah, again, this, this one just looks a bit, a bit closer to the relationship with the, the closest neighbouring property, um, Lydia Place. The dwelling that I've referred to can be seen um, just to the east, to the right there, the one with the solar panels on the roof. Um, probably worth pointing out um, that this dwelling, along with two others, the Oast House and the Coach House, um, are accessed by a private track which runs behind um, the car restoration building, um, Woofton Grange, which, is, which forms, um, I believe, um, is, is in use as a number of flats now, is, is further beyond to the, to the east. And the next one, please. And yeah, I think this is the final photo. So this is taken just to the west of the site on the access to... Um, an area of essentially scrubland now which has housed previously, well, the, the, there's an existing mobile home but not in any um, residential, residential use at the moment. So the photo looks northeast over the building. Um, you can see the western elevation and sort of just tucked behind that brash is where obviously that small lean-to extension would attach to. And I think we can probably just stay on that slide for now. So the application is, is to be considered against the development plan in this location, which comprises the Herefordshire Local Plan core strategy and the Brimfield and Little Hereford Neighbourhood Development Plan. And of course, the MPPF, the National Planning Policy Framework, is also a material consideration. In terms of the principle of the development, this is discussed in the officer's report from paragraph 6.1 to 6.5. But in essence, the proposal looks to continue the use of the building for storage, but, uh, for scaffolding, but also introduce a motorcycle tire fitting unit. Although the site is outside of Brimfield and Wyson, it, it would make use of an existing building to, co to accommodate a small startup enterprise. The building and the wider complex, so the building that's used for car restoration, have not been any, in any active agricultural use for a considerable period of time. It has been otherwise generally used for a range of storage uses. As touched upon in the report, it is accepted that there may be other purpose-built units locally in Brimfield, Ludlow, Lempster, Tembury Wells. However, there is no requirement for the applicant to demonstrate why such options have been discounted um, and subject to a consideration of the proposal's impact on the local highway network, the setting of the site, including impacts on the immunity of any adjoining properties. It's considered that in principle, the use of the building for a small scale enterprise is accepted through policies RA6 and BLH18 of the development plan. Members will be aware from the officer's report that um, objection has been received concerning the impact of the proposal on the immunity of neighbouring properties through noise generated from the, propose, from the proposal, namely the um, motorcycle tie fitting unit. 
As members who attended yesterday um, should have seen, and as illustrated through the photos, the site is found within a small cluster of buildings with some residential properties nearby. The scale of the operations would be limited on the basis that the number of persons operating the unit would be at most two, but generally limited to one. The unit is small and contained, as seen in the photo earlier, and operations would not be permitted to take place outside of this unit or within the forecourt as secured through condition. In addition, the use of noise generating equipment would be restricted to the hours as set out in the relevant condition appended to the report before members. And noting concerns with respect to the air compressor unit, a condition is recommended to ensure that the door to the air compressor remains closed whilst it is in operation. Furthermore, it is located to the western elevation, away from the main bulk of residential properties which lie to the east of the site. The site benefits from an existing storage use and the proposed use, whilst considered B2, would, by virtue of its scale and through the imposition of safeguarding conditions resulting in enhanced control, not be one which would adversely impact on the immunity of neighbouring properties. With the Environmental Health Officer returning no objection to the scheme subject to the conditions, there is considered no conflict with policies BLH18, SD1 and RA6 of the development plan. Um. In terms of visual impact, operational development is limited to some minor external changes to the building, including the provision of roller shutter doors and a lean-to extension to the western elevation. As set out in the officer's report, there is considered to be no harm to the visual immunity in context of the character of the site as existing. Officers would also here note that the site is located a significant distance to the west of the Grade 2 listed Woofton Grange, and noting the intervening development, it is not considered that the minor development proposed would lead to any harm to the setting of the building. Um, in terms of highways, there's been concerns um, raised in that regard as well. Um, but in terms of the previous use of the site for general storage, which is, has generally been unencumbered, meaning that vehicle movements are unrestricted, the proposal, by virtue of the conditions, allows us to condition the amount of vehicle movements that would come to and from the site, um, and given its small-scale intensity, um, there's considered to be no um, cumulative um, severe harm. In terms of drainage and ecology, um, noting the comments made by the planning ecologist, the proposal would not impact directly upon any protected species, given that it solely relates to the change of use of the building, with operational development being limited. The proposed toilet and washroom would connect to an existing septic tank serving the site, um, and that is discussed further in the officer's report as well. So in conclusion, the proposal represents a scheme for the reuse of an existing building supported in principle by the prevailing policies of the development plan and the objectives of the MPPF. The proposal would, would provide some employment in a rural setting and it's considered that the scale and nature is such that subject to relevant conditions as discussed and as set out in the report, the use would be controlled and self-limiting, safeguarding against any adverse impacts, namely in respect of noise and highways. As such, it is considered that the proposal accords with the principal policies of the development plan and the overarching aims and objectives of the MPPF. Therefore, officers consider it is a sustainable form of development and accordingly recommend approval subject to the conditions as set out within the officer's report. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, uh, councillors. <clears throat> this application is a mess. This is the wrong site for an industrial development as it lies within a residential area surrounded by houses and is accessed only by a one mile long single track cul-de-sac country lane with no pavements. <clears throat> the proposal would directly affect the living conditions of nearby residents owing to environmental nuisances and Brimfield generally by increased traffic movements. Locally, there is overwhelming opposition to this proposal. There have been 35 letters of objection from 22 households and the Paris Council has objected. There are no supporters. Your officer's report is incorrect, in fact, misleading in places and blatantly ignores your policies. For example, section 1.1 states that a mature hedgerow screens the site from a, from a property known as Robin's Nest. No, it does not. Robin's Nest is the name given to the unauthorised and occupied residential caravan sited within the, the same former agricultural building proposed to be used in addition as scaffolding store and tyre fitting business. 
Section 3, relevant planning history. This is nonsense. 3.1 and 3.2 each refer to a different building, not this one. And 3.3 was never implemented. There is no established use of this building. Section 6.1.1, the report downplays the impact upon residential properties. As a matter of fact, there are 10 dwellings within 50 metres of the application site, four of which actually adjoin it. The report does not explain why the concerns expressed by neighbours, Brimfield residents and the Parish Council should be ignored or why policies RA6 and RA6 of the core strategy, amongst others, intended to protect residents from industrial processes and traffic should be set aside. The report does not explain why your ecologist consultation response is blatantly ignored. That report concludes further information required and the reason given to demonstrate compliance with the Wildlife and Countryside Act, MPPF, core strategy policies, SS6, SD3, SD4 and LD2 and the council duties under the NERC Act. Finally, we have submitted to the council a formal complaint concerning this application which demonstrates by case law that what is proposed is B2 use and not B1. B2 is a general industrial use likely to cause detriment to the amenity of rural er uh, residential areas. The formal complaint also raises fundamental questions over the management of this application and the failure of the authority to comply with statutory obligations. I would suggest, therefore, that this application is deferred today in order that the above matters can be addressed. Thank you. Right. Um, yes, if you could go to back to see, Thank you. Right. I have one speaker already. Councillor Summers. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I noticed yesterday... Sorry, you need to... put my microphone on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Summers. Firstly, I want to thank all those members who attended yesterday's site visit, a long way from Hereford in Brimfield, but held in glorious sunshine, which we all enjoyed. My thanks also to the case officer, Ollie Jones, for his report and for explaining some of the main issues during our visit yesterday. This change of use application to commercial storage and motorcycle tyre fitting units, together with extension to the east, eastern elevation uh, to accommodate toilet and air compressor at Robin's Nest at the Yard Wooferton Grange, has aroused local interest and considerable opposition, as um, the first speaker has already said. 22 households have submitted letters of objection, raising issues such as residential amenity, traffic volumes, and whether this is an appropriate location for the proposed enterprise in such a rural setting. These objections have been supported by Brimfield and Little Hereford Group Parish Council, who, as is stated in 5.1, do, do not oppose the commercial storage of materials, and they do support rural small businesses but they state that the proposed business is not suitable for this location and are concerned about the increased traffic likely to be generated. <coughs> they also state that the application is contrary to policy BLH 18 of the Neighbourhood Development Plan. Environmental Health have commented on potential noise and nuisance issues that might arise from the development. And as we saw yesterday, there is a cluster of houses and some flats in the proximity of the building. The impact on the amenity of residents in the vicinity is a crucial point when determining this application. The sighting of a compressor and the tire fitting unit are the main concerns here. One member yesterday warned at the site meeting of the noise compressors can make and what happens for instance, if the door to the room housing the compressor is left open for whatever reason, what effect will that have on the local environment? I note in the proposed conditions that equipment generating noise can only open under restricted hours. But it is not always easy, Mr Chairman, to enforce these conditions 
especially in a rural location like this. It is also not entirely clear from the report how many visits uh, by customers are likely to happen each day if this application was approved. How many motorcycles are likely to go uh, to this site. The number of persons working there, I agree, will be restricted to two. But if you work out some of the maths, and if the site is um, used to its maximum with two people working there, this could mean 200 or more visits a week. It seems quite a lot of visits to me. This quiet site might eventually become very busy, especially with scaffolding being unloaded too from large vehicles. Now, I'm all for encouraging new rural businesses, but the question here is whether it is the most appropriate site for motor a motorcycle tire fitting business when there is a business park at the other end of Wyson Lane in Brimfield and similar facilities in Ludlow and Lempster. They are for precisely this sort of activity. One of the other concerns raised by local residents has been the increased amount of traffic in Wyson Lane. The transportation manager admits in 4.1, uh, that I quote, that the proposal is likely to result in an intensification of both the access to the workshop and Wyson Lane over the permitted use of the site. Um, close the comment. The manager, though, does go on to say that it is unlikely to result in cumulative impacts that could be considered severe. And severe, of course, is the term used in the NPPF in deciding whether highway safety is seriously affected or not. The transport manager, I noticed, also asked for more information, and I'm not aware whether he received it or not, because his second report is very, very short indeed. Everyone who attended yesterday's visit will, however, have noticed the narrow nature of Weiss and Lane and seen the effects of HGVs and other vehicles as they service local farms and the successful drainage business further down the lane. Weissen Lane is popular with walkers, cyclists, horse riders, and is also a route for children going to catch the school bus. The extra traffic likely to be generated by the, this application if approved, needs to be seen in this context. And there is an additional consideration. The parish council has been working hard to extend the 30 mile an hour speed limit in Weissen Lane, and the uh, traffic regulation order consultation process has just been completed. It would be ironic indeed that as we try to reduce traffic speeds in the lane, more HGVs have to access this narrow winding lane which, as we, some of us saw yesterday, gets so easily blocked. The concern also is that motorcyclists may well congregate here as they go to and from the tire-fitting business. It might become a bit of a focus uh, for motorcyclists from a wide area, which is the last thing we want in our narrow lanes. And, as the earlier speaker said, Weissen Lane has no pavements either. As the case officer states later in his report, the concerns raised in respect to the proposal's impact on the amenity of neighbouring properties in respect of noise and on the local highway network are acknowledged. But he goes on to say that it can be considered a sustainable form of development as is recommended for approval. But as with so many applications, Mr Chairman, it is a fine balance, isn't it? Should we support a new rural business which may generate some limited employment, very limited employment, and meet storage and other needs, or do we see this as an intrusion in open countryside, an industrial type activity which would be much better carried on somewhere else? The scale of the operation may seem limited, but what about the future? Does this application meet the tests posed by policies SD1 MT1 and RA6 of the local plan and policy BLH18 of the neighbourhood development plan. Just how sustainable do members feel this application is? Will the wider community benefit in any way? Concerns over residential amenity and highway safety register, if not a red warning to me, but certainly an amber one. What about all of you? What do you think? 
I look forward to listening to the debate, and thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Sloan. We'll open up the debate now. Councillor Summers is the first up person. I thank you, Chair, and I thank the case officer for following up on the compressor issue and including the conditions. Um, I've got two issues, the, condi the compressor, I hope the conditions work out, but we need to make sure that that room is sound, soundproofed and uh, there's, there's baffles put on the compressor if that's the case. But from personal, from my own knowledge of, in Rotherwas, where I've had situations with compressor noise, it, enforcement takes time with all kinds of sound monitoring and it can take weeks to get it sorted. So it's something that we need to be looking at quite closely because that kind of noise it is very aggravating, it whines, and it disturbs, and once it starts, it's very hard to stop, and it's very hard for enforcement to, to do anything about it, So even though they're, they really try. But we are short-staffed, it's way out in the country, and I think we need to really focus on this one, because that will cause trouble in the area. Um, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Milmore. Yeah, I, I'm just uh, a bit concerned about the uh, the noise from motorbikes. As as you probably know, we all know that motorbikes generate a lot more noise than cars. Um, and is there any idea of the the the, the uh, quantity of motorbikes that will be travelling up and down this road um, daily? I think there is an indication in one of the. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I mean. Why well, would say that there have been no sort of um, concrete numbers in terms of how many, because I think it obviously does depend on any given day. What they've specified is that, or what, that what we've been told is that it takes around two, uh, around an hour to, to change two wheels, change two tyres, essentially. So, on the basis of the operation, uh, operational hours that we've stipulated by way of condition, that that is kind of restricted in any case. So, and on the basis obviously that there's only going to be one or maximum two people working on the site. Um, that that would be generally limited, but I think also on the basis that it's going to be internet-based or that you know wheels are going to be delivered to and from the site, perhaps by car or van, and not motorbike. It's not always going to be motorbikes travelling to and from the site and creating noise. Thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of things. I did a bit of investigating last night. Did you know you can send your motorbike? wheels away to have the tires changed so you take them off the bike yourself you send them away and then they send them back to you I think that's amazing I don't know the the average age for motorcyclists now is 41 the average spend on a bike is about 13,000 pounds that chucks up in my mind someone's having a midlife crisis I, sorry have we got any bikers here have we oh there we are you see um, but it was interesting uh, that got my train of thought then, that maybe the, is this place going to be not just a, a service, I mean, we know what the application's for, but is it going to be tyre retail, in which case you may have people turning up in other sorts of vehicles as opposed to, because I think we've all got this idea of big revving bikes coming flying down that little lane, going in, having the work done, and then off they go again. But I just wanted to drag out and get everyone's opinions really, especially uh, the planning officer and Mr Bishop, uh, whether or not that's what we should have in our heads, uh, or whether or not this will be a an online s sales service type thing. Um, when it comes to noise and use of the premises though, when I was reading through the report, I came along uh, 6.13, and I don't know if you can all bring that all up or if you'll indulge me, Chair, shall I read it out? Uh, 6.13. With the above safeguarding measures controlling the use of the building, it is not considered that the proposal would result in any demonstrable harm to the immunity of neighbouring properties. Indeed, it must be remembered that the pre-existing use of the building for agricultural and storage purposes has been unencumbered, allowing for potentially greater impact on the immunity of neighbouring properties. Officers therefore should consider... Officers therefore consider that the proposal of this scale and nature would not be inappropriate in this location. Um, so, at present, then, agricultural use, that means a 
agricultural business, you could have tractors and implements going out in, in and out of there 24 hours a day. Whereas with this application, it is limited, time limited, to uh, the hours of operation. It's also limited to the number of people working there, so therefore the capacity. I, now, I, I listened to what the speaker said, and you, you have to listen to neighbours, you have to listen to parish councillors, they are the people who deal with it all day, every day. But I'm just wondering maybe this isn't as going to be as busy as we made out, it isn't going to have the number of visitors that we, maybe we're talking about, and not only that, if there was never any complaints, I'm here to be advised before about tractors, trailers, combines, you know my thoughts on the agricultural community, going in and out of there at this time of year, they're starting to move around at half past four in the morning and still going until late at night. Now, if that's you. acceptable. Colonel, you've had three minutes, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll leave that there, but maybe a bit of food for thought. Thank you, Chairman. The, um, I'm finding it difficult to uh, do anything but agree with the officer's report and the officer's proposal uh, or suggestion in this case. Um, but uh, like Councillor uh, Summers, I do have a great concern about uh, the impact that compressors have. Um, I happen to know because a chap who lived the next building to me, they produce um, high grade uh, furniture and they use compressors and extractors and, and so on in there and they have gone to enormous trouble and expense uh, and soundproofing inside I mean in places it's almost 12 inches thick in order to contain that noise and you can still just hear it humming without that sort of protection that without a sort of mitigation compressors really can make life a misery for people who live near them Thank you. Um, thank you. I, I think the thing that concerns me about this application is the impact on the residential amenity um, and also the, the impact on the, the lane. Um, we could see uh, th there are a lot of houses towards the um, end of that lane and for any vehicles coming through it's definitely going to have an impact on those residences uh, but also the compressor the noise compressor and the impact on the houses around the site um, that that is of concern for me and I think that the residents objections need to be taken into consideration and I, I would suggest that we um, take on board the the objectors um, comment about deferral and actually find out what the issues are that have have been referred to the the council for review on this and and then come back to make a decision following that It is actually a proposal for deferral because I'm not entirely sure what the issues that have been raised are and and I, I would like some clarification about those because if, if there are issues around this application that haven't actually been finalised, I feel that we need to to have some clarification on what those are and take those on board and then be able to make a decision. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, we do have access to silent run compressor systems. Um, you can use you screw system compressors as opposed to conventional piston displacement compressors. The other thing you can do is put a so we could put that on as a condition. The other thing you could do is condition um, soundproofing in the compressor unit as well. Just you know, there are options out there to mitigate the sound. Thank you, Chair. I'm, I'll second Councillor Fagan's uh, motion. That I, I think there are a number of issues highlighted by Mr. Burton that need to be explored. Um, certainly, the uh, I'm not clear in my own mind where B1 use stops and B2 starts, for instance, as a as a 
as use. So I think if we can explore those issues uh, and bring this back at a later date, it would be very helpful for all of us. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I understand the uh, immediately adjacent there is a, a car restoring um, facility. It's part of the same complex virtually. And I understand this enforcement action over that. So perhaps that should be clarified as, as well before any further action over um, the um, proposed uh, motorcycle repair facility is uh, given any permission. Uh, um, the, the point on that is that uh, that has received retrospective planning permission for that um, car restoration, so that is a valid that is permission. But that doesn't re that that doesn't um, impact on this proposal. This is a separate building, mm -hmm. um, so uh, but that has got planning permission for 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 car, for car restoration. Can we go to the vote on that, bearing in mind that we will have to come back to leave aside the, the, the issue of the local member? Uh, those in favour of deferral? Nine. Against? Two. One abstention. Oh, two abstentions, sorry. Two. Okay, well, uh, we, we meet another day on that particular issue. Now I will move, bearing in mind that this, uh, I'm the net local member, I'll hand over to Councillor Seldon to chair the next item. Chairman, could I, uh, just a quick comment. Uh, uh, for reasons I won't bore the committee with, I have to leave by one o'clock. Uh, I sincerely hope we'll be finished by one o'clock, Councillor Johnson. We'll pause while Councillor James takes up the position of ward member for this next item. Is she, I thought she was here or in, or she? She on Zoom. Right, okay, this is our application number Two double one four nine five proposed rear extension and front porch and detached garage at Westerings Kington Herefordshire HR five three H E. We have a staff uh, application, which is why it is before us today. Um, the case officer is Amber Morris, and I believe she's on the line now. So, Amber, in your own time, please. Thank you. The case here before members is presented at this committee as the applicant is a member of staff for the council. This would usually be dealt with as a delegated matter, but due to this reason it is not. The broad location of the application is demarked by the red star found on the west side of Kingswood Road, just outside the market town of Kington. Next slide, please. In slightly more detail, this slide shows the full extent of the red line boundary, as well as the application site's relationship with the immediate neighbouring dwellings and the open countryside to the west. The site is made up of a single storey um, dwelling constructed of stone and render under a plain clay tile roof. The dwelling has an existing rear extension, as well as an attached garage and a wooden outbuilding situated to the northwest corner of the site. 
Next slide, please. Planning permission is sought for the construction of a replacement rear extension, side extension, front porch and attached garage. Next slide, please. When comparing the existing and proposed floor plans, it is evident that the scheme would not result in built development of an unacceptable scale and would not constitute overdevelopment. The proposed rear extension porch and garage have been designed in a manner that reflects the host dwelling, utilising matching render stone and tiles. This will ensure continuity of appearance. Next slide, please. With regards to overlooking, the extension would introduce a number of glazed openings. However, due to the single story nature and positioning of the fenestration to the existing building, the scheme would not increase impact upon residential amenity. Next slide, please. It is noted that the existing garage is to be converted into a living accommodation. However, a new detached garage is also proposed on site, the plans for which are on the slide now. Therefore, the proposal will not have an adverse effect on the amount of off-road parking. Furthermore, as a householder application, HRA appropriate assessments are screened out. And given the residential context and scale of this proposal, it is not considered that there are likely significant effects on the Riverwise Special Area of Conservation. Um, in this regard, no conflict with SD4 is found, um, identified. To conclude, no conflict is found with the local and national policies, namely SD1, LD1 and SS6 of the core strategy with regards to scale, amenity and design approach. As such, the scheme is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Ms Morris. Um, as there are no public speakers, I'll go straight across to the ward member, Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. I'm not going to say much. I, uh, um, as, as you well understand and members understand, this is here because it is a, an a application by a member of staff. Um, you know, Kingswood Road is, I always call it, the stockbroker belt of Kington, so it's an appropriate area of accommodation for a planning officer. Um, <laughs> That's cruel, but it's, uh, um, can I say uh, it's very straightforward. I don't think um, you know it's it, a small development, and I, I think relatively tasteful in the area. It is an area of, um, of bungalow-type development, and uh, I hope members will support this particular application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. I'll open up the debate now, Councillor Summers. It looks pretty straightforward. It doesn't affect any policies. I don't think it affects neighbours. Can we go directly to the vote? Is that a proposal for it's accepting proposal the... For accepting. Uh, officers recommend that, so, proposed by Councillor Summers, seconded by Councillor Hardwick. I think you got there just before you, Councillor Johnson. Um, are there any comments from officers? No comment, Chairman. Councillor James, any comments from yourself? In that case... We'll go straight to the vote. It's been proposed by Councillor Summers, seconded by Councillor Harvick, that this is accepted as per officer recommendation. That is passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attendance today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the date of the next meeting is Friday, the 9th of July, and I believe site visits will be on the Thursday, the 5th, uh, the uh, the 8th, even Thursday the 8th, I beg your pardon. Sites visits Thursday the 8th, yeah, I can't count, can't still anything. Next meeting, Friday there. Can I, before I formally close the meeting, can I check that the live stream has been turned?